Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of integral calculus, also known as Calc 2. All material has an assumed prerequisite of differential calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for those students who are going through Calc 2, specifically work problems in Calc 2. You usually encounter this material right after you learn basic integration, maybe having done some rotations of solids and finding volumes uh, and areas between curves and stuff like that. But generally, at least in my experience, you have not gotten into integration techniques like hardcore ones yet because they're not really needed for this material. Now, I'm breaking this video series into several videos because I think it's worthwhile to do that. A lot of what you're gonna see here is just building up the language you need to step into your Calc 2 course and talk about work problems in your class. So let's start with the concept of force because this will be integral to your success in this course, pun intended. The definition of force. Force is an influence on a body or a system producing or tending to produce a change in movement, shape, or other effects. That sounds like an infinite number of other possibilities. It is commonly considered a push or a pull. Now, I think most people do quickly understand the idea of force. However, there is a bit of a confusion as to what force is versus acceleration. As is commonly known, force is mass times acceleration. That's the way we generally write it in kind of the early forms of mathematics, but it generally is acceleration due to gravity if you're standing on a planet. However, that's not necessarily true. There could be other accelerations happening due to many other things. You're in a car, that type of thing, you're speeding up. Now, having said this formula, let's actually take a look at the formula in a bit more detail. And here is that very, very famous formula. Force is mass times acceleration. And like I said, acceleration normally, as we think about it, is acceleration due to gravity. But again, you can undergo many accelerations, not just the acceleration due to gravity. So to say that an object is experiencing only a single force is, well, unrealistic. Anyhow, one thing we should recall from Calc 1, if S is the position function, then its derivative, its first derivative, represents the velocity. Its second derivative, using the good old Leibniz notation, is the acceleration. And so that is the calculus way of representing the acceleration of an object. And what's interesting about this is what you're looking at is an equation that relates some value to the second derivative of a function. And this equation involving a derivative is known as a differential equation. And that is a branch of mathematics that if you're an engineer, you're going to study. You'll play around with equations that involve derivatives of unknown functions, and you'll be able to find, hopefully, those functions using some techniques in differential equations. But that's not the purview of this lecture. I'm just letting you know that this is a good introduction to what's called a differential equation. I tend to give differential equation problems, very low level ones, to my Calc 1 students so they get used to the language of differential equations. Now that we have a formula for the force acting upon an object or a mass, we can now talk about the units of force. Remember, force is mass times acceleration. And we happen to know acceleration is the second derivative of position. Well, if position was measured in the metric system, then the units for position would be meters. And the units for its derivative, if we're talking meters and then time in terms of seconds, which is fairly typical, its derivative would be meters per second. 
And I hope you don't mind, I'm just gonna write M over S, it's just a little bit faster. And its second derivative would therefore be in meters per second squared. Because if you think about derivatives, if that's our position function, the derivative is rise over run, essentially. I mean, obviously it's instantaneous rise over run, but the rise unit here is in meters. The run unit is in seconds. And so rise over run is, well, meters per second. Now, if you look at the derivative graph, let's just pretend it looks something like this right here. And remember, the derivative, if we're looking at the derivative graph, the units for the vertical axis are gonna be meters per second. The units for the horizontal axis are still in seconds. And again, to calculate the derivative of that derivative, you'll essentially find the slope between two points, specifically the instantaneous slope between two points, and that's rise over run. Rise being meters per second divided by seconds, and so you get meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Going back over here, we can say that the units for this, I'm not gonna say equals, I'm gonna put brackets around the fact that we know the units for acceleration are meters per second squared, and in the metric system, the units for mass, because that's what this is, mass, are gonna be in kilograms. And that would be the units for force in the metric system, kilogram meters per second squared. However, in the metric system, kilogram meters per second squared is given a very special name. It's called the Newton. So the unit of force in the metric system is the Newton. Conceptually, this just says a force of one Newton accelerates one kilogram at one meter per second squared. And that interpretation is just because I'm saying the mass, let's just let that be one, one kilogram. And so if the force is one Newton, then this is just saying, okay, we have one Newton is equal to one kilogram at one meter per second squared. All the units will match up perfectly. Now, in the imperial system, which is the US system, and it is also used in Burma and Liberia, however, it probably somewhat outdated, to be honest with you. It might not be used in Liberia anymore, I'm not sure. But we use the pound as our unit of force. Now, let me be very clear here. The pound is actually a unit of force. Why am I saying I need to be very clear about that? Because when you step on a scale, to weigh yourself, you have the choice of seeing your quote unquote weight in kilograms or in pounds. Pounds, well, that's a unit of force. It is measuring the force of the planet upon your mass. And that force will change based upon elevation. Why does it change based upon elevation? Well, because acceleration due to gravity gets weaker as you get away from the center of the earth. So if you go to the highest point on earth with a scale, why would you do that? I have no clue. And then weigh yourself, it's a great weight loss program. Not only have you lost a little bit of weight just by climbing and burning calories, but you've also lost weight because the earth is acting upon you with a smaller amount of acceleration. Despite the fact that maybe your mass has not changed during that climb. Let's say you did not lose any mass. You didn't lose a limb. You didn't uh, get your foot bitten off by something or whatever, right? So you lost no mass. You get up to the top of that tallest point on the planet Earth. Well, just because the acceleration due to gravity decreases as you move away from the center of an object, you will have lost, quote unquote, weight. Weight is kind of our concept of force. Whereas on the other hand, when you step on that scale and it measures something in kilograms, maybe you uh, quote unquote weigh 60 kilograms. Well, that's not measuring force, that's measuring mass. And because your mass should never change, well, okay, as long as you don't like lose limbs or shed some type of cells or molecules or anything like that, your mass should remain constant. However, if you took that scale to the tallest point on the planet Earth, and weighed yourself, again, I'll say weight, weigh in quotes, it would register a smaller number of kilograms. Maybe you started at 60 kilograms at sea level and it might show you that you weigh, in quotes there, 58 kilograms at the tallest point on the planet Earth. 
but that's not true. Your mass is not changing. So when you step on a scale and quote unquote, weigh yourself in kilograms, it is not true. It is estimating your mass based upon a sea level computation. All of that being said, I kind of repeat that here. A pound is a force or a weight. However, a gram or a kilogram is a mass. If you step on a scale and it returns your quote unquote weight in kilograms, it's technically lying. Your weight, which is a measure of the force of gravity acting upon your mass, changes with your distance from the center of the earth. So this is why I decided this is a good conversation to have outside of a classroom because some people will get this immediately and some people will sit here and need a bigger conversation. And I'm presenting that right now rather than burning time in a classroom. Depending on the order with which you're following these videos, or if you're one of my students or not, your next video might be about work. What is work? Or your next video might be density and hydrostatic pressure and force. What are those things? The purpose of all these videos, just to set up some definitions and concepts for you so that when you step into your class, you'll be awesome. All right, I hope that this video helps you out. I hope you have a wonderful day. Be a good human. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry Don't